Okay, now the camera's shaking around. I can't really do nothing about that because I don't feel like holding it and filming at the same time. I've got it clamped to the oh shit bar on my Chevy truck. So y'all can just get motion sickness, I guess. But uh, you can probably hear it. It's raining, which is good. But uh, the drought is so bad. I'm literally, literally not mowing a single yard this weekend. There's nothing I have needed. We've had a, a decent amount of rain here the last few days, and it's still not enough, and it's not made enough difference so I can mow this weekend. I'm gonna mow one Monday, and that's it. Then I'll probably end up mowing every single yard toward the end of next week. Well, not every single yard, but bit vast majority of them, so that's going to suck to get my schedule back in line. But anyway, it's 8 o'clock, just a hair after, and I'm heading to Harlan, Kentucky, where my local John Deere dealer is, to pick up my Z915E. I reckon it's finally done after two months. Well, those of you that don't know, it's a 2020 Z915E 54 inch cut with a 25 horse carbureted gas engine. Cola. And what happened was over the winter, I don't know if I just let it sit too long without firing it or what happened, but. The first issue I had, y'all know about this if you've seen the video, was the first time I fired it up this year, it was ticking real bad. And what had happened, I'm about positive, was the oil in the hydraulic lifters, I only assume that engine has hydraulic lifters, because I know what a lot of coders do, the oil drained down out of them, and I didn't really run it until it got hot because it was ticking so bad I was afraid it would damage something. So I drained the brand new oil in it out because I had changed the oil at the end of the season so I'd be ready for this year. And I put a thicker or a, a thinner oil in it and run it until it got warm the tick went away and never gone back. Well, then it started here and there cutting out surging real bad it would be sometimes you could fire it up first time of the day you know cold engine and everything and it would run for about 30 minutes or so before you would start doing it and then sometimes you know five minutes in it would start doing it and just not stop and it would I can't explain it without sounding like an idiot by making the sound but it'd be like you know run it pick up a little bit and it didn't matter if you hit the choke or anything it wouldn't really help it pick back up sometimes it would stall completely out but it seemed like with the blades off it wouldn't do it and the reason I took it to the dealer is because I figured it was an electrical issue and I'm not a lawnmower mechanic. I, I've dabbled with them. I don't have the patience no more for it. I don't know enough about it. I just give up on it. I used to do a good bit of that kind of thing, but not anymore. So I took it to the dealer. They've had it for two months. It took them three weeks before they could even look at it. Well, they have been corresponding with John Deere as far as I know this entire time. John Deere's been telling them what to do, what to look for, and blah, 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 blah. So, on a side note, based off that, I would assume, since they're corresponding with John Deere, that they are trying to do it under warranty. They put a technical case ticket in on it because they, I guess they just wasn't sure what it was. They checked the spark, had good spark, blah, blah, blah. 
but I don't know either they trying to do it under warranty or they just don't know what the hell they're doing to be frank about it but when I first bought the mower I called them because they're my closest dealer and the mower came from Agpro the warranty is not in my name because I bought it used from the guy I didn't buy it off the lot I bought it from the owner so I got sidetracked what I was going along with that anyway hopefully it'll be under warranty and I've got half of mine to make a big deal out of it you know try and get them covered under warranty if I can I'm gonna get the warranty put in my name when I'm over here but I'm not keeping the mower. I'm going to sell it probably as soon as possible. I've got a brand new mower and knock on wood it'll be plenty for now which I, I want to get a standard or at least look more into a standard because I think even if I just broke it up you know rode the sit downs on yards I need to sit down and then rode a standard on yards I could use a standard I think it would help my back a lot but I don't know, I'm looking into it. So there's no need having two sit downs, especially when they're similar in size. I mean, there's only six inches difference between the two. And the 60 inch cuts just as good as the 54. The deck on it rides the ground the same way. It don't pit and divot and whatnot. That skag, it would. It would just scalp them to the ground on the side and everything else. The 60 inch John Deere don't. It rides just like a 54 inch John Deere. But, uh, no, I'm going to get rid of it as soon as possible. And I'm probably just going to take that money and pay it toward the new mower. Just put it right into it. So it'll be kind of, sort of, as if I bought the new one instead of ever buying the other one. I may be wrong in thinking like that, but in my mind, that's how it would work out. But, uh, I'm going to list it at 8,000 and go down from there. I'm not going to take any less than 6,500, which I'll still be coming out ahead at 6,500, because I made, I made just almost enough if you want to look at it like this last year that I bought the zero turn and the truck but of course both of those are long term investments but anyway uh, so I'm not happy with John Deere for taking so long to fix the mower now the mechanic one week like the week before the fourth uh, he had COVID which seems rather coincidental you know a week before the fourth he had COVID but anyway I ain't going that's that ain't holding nothing against him or nothing about that so you know certain that shit happens but I'm not happy with it taking so long to be fixed and another thing I'm not happy with well if they don't cover it under warranty then I ain't gonna be happy about that either but another thing I'm not happy with my new zero turn I bought it from AgPro and it, I, my dealer my salesman was with or is with Cleveland Tennessee AgPro well I asked them if they had this mower and if they could get it to the Knoxville AgPro the reason being I made that all in one trip I took the skag back to the dealer to be sold the, the dealer sold it for me on commission took the skag back and picked up the new mower all in one trip the mower come from I can't remember where in Tennessee it, they had to go from that place in Tennessee to Cleveland Tennessee and from Cleveland to Knoxville okay first off they charged me $500 just to get it there and yes I did ask them if they would you know get it there for me but 
but so started five hundred dollars just to get it to Knoxville, and then I was under the I, I got it financed, which I'm glad for that because that's been what's bit me in the ass during this whole situation of having mower issues. I couldn't get loans, I couldn't get financing on a Skag, and I just had, I had to pull cash. I didn't have no choice. But I did get financing on the John Deere. Okay, so mower, the Acro price gouges has fucked. Go on Acro's website and look up their zero turns. Depending on location, and I told them this. I said, well, why depending on location is the price so different? They like, well, it ain't supposed to be. It's supposed to be the same all across the board, but by God, it ain't. You can go on there right now and look. I seen a Z950 brand new price anywhere from 12000 to 17000 on their website. So, I got the mower and it was like just under 14 grand. And they said after all fees and different blah, 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 it's gonna be 15 grand. And the number they kept telling me, I asked them three or four times, what's it gonna cost after interest and everything with this loan, or the, with the finance? And the number I kept being told was 17.2 and change, which is about $5,000 too much for this mower considering what it is because the Z915E is the base model, the very first model in the in the commercial lineup from John Deere. 25 horsepower, you got three different deck sizes. The suspension seat does not come on it unless you order it and have it put on it, which would be a lot extra compared to just hit, choosing it as an option. So not even as many features as a 950. The only, only difference between a 915E and a 950M is the deck options are different, but, but not much. You can get a mod deck on the 950. I don't think you can get a mod deck, I'm about positive, on a 915E. 915E, 48, 54, 60. 950 is a 60 and a 72 in a regular or a mod deck. Okay, so that's the only difference in the decks. Transmissions are the exact same on the whole entire lineup. They are all the same transactions. So, no difference there. Frames are the same. I'm about positive. Only difference between a 915E and a 950. The 915 has a Kohler Command 25 horsepower carbureted engine. The 950 has a 27 horsepower carbureted Kawasaki. Two horsepower difference. Now sure, it makes a big difference because Kawasaki is our, our torque monsters. And they're gas guzzlers, that's for damn sure. It, this thing drains gas like you wouldn't believe. A local guy, he started with a 915E, didn't like it because he had carburetor issues all the time. He's got a 950 and he's wanting to get something different because of how much gas it uses. I didn't think it'd be this much of a difference, but boy, it is. It's a huge difference. But, uh, so the only difference between the two is a little bit bigger engine. You can get a 60 inch cut on a 915E. The only difference between the standard deck on a 915E and a 950 is the 950 has a little welded step plate on the deck, which I don't like because it makes your step up like an inch taller. And I think it may have bigger wheels on it. It's it's taller, it's a taller mower. It's a, high, it's a little bit tall, higher step to get up on the mower. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, the wheels are a little bigger and the step on the deck makes it more. And I don't like that step. Reason being is Especially with my red trailer, if I'm mowing out of it, the way I get on and off is I climb over the side of the trailer. So when I get off the mower, my foot is on the deck and I have to let my foot pivot. 
and if your foot is locked in place and you pivot, your knee is asking to be fucking hurt in some way or another. The 915E just has grip tape on top of the deck. It helps, but it's, you know, enough to where you can easily spin your foot on it. I do not like that step. I've very seriously considered cutting the damn thing off and just putting grip tape, off, grip tape on it. But anyway, I'm getting off track. That's the only difference between the mowers. It does not, by any fucking means, warrant a $10,000 price markup over a 915E. A 915E right now is about 10 grand. Which two years ago, they was about 8,500, 8,900, 9,000, whatever, about nine grand. They've gone up about 1,500 to $2,000, which that's to be expected. Everything's gone up. But you can go, I seen on Facebook the other day, like I said, price gouges as fuck. 915E, Athens, Tennessee, Agro. 10,000 and change. Then I seen another 915E at another Agro. 12 grand. Over 12 grand. That's bullshit. They have to be marking the price up the, on the, for different locations based on availability. That has that's the only reason they would have to justify marking the price up. Otherwise, why the fuck would they be doing it? Because that's not right marking the price up all over the place different dealers but anyway my point being I was told after interest and everything my mower was going to cost me 17200 and change and the payments were going to be like 240 ish a month and I said I can do that you know I, it sucks but I can do it 240 a month, not bad. And so far, I've been paying more than that anyway because I can save on the interest if I pay it off early. But here's the good part. Just a few days after I got the mower, I got a, a bill in the mail. And after interest and everything, 